afternoon everyone and welcome to our daily video golf blog. Today is Saturday the 11th of August 2018, our 100th short game Saturday. And as I've mentioned in video blogs this week, we are going to stop at 104 and I'm going to go on to working on my new teaching platform, perfecting it so that when it goes live shortly after that, it's going to be great for you, the students. You will be able to send me swings uh, and you will get an analysis of your swing for $8 a month. You can send me as many swings as you like. It's going to be a great platform and so stay tuned. If you want news on this, go to my website, ritson soulcom and if you just type in Mel Soul Golf School, you'll find me. And subscribe to my newsletter because in the newsletter I'm going to make the announcement when everything is uh, ready to go. Today we're going to talk about controlling your distances with your pitching. Amateurs have a hard time with pitching because pitching is a feel shot. You've got a 30 yard shot, 40 yard shot, 50 yard shot. It's a feel shot and in order to keep the feel you Or the inclination to go and spend a lot of time practicing. So what I want to do here is I want to show you how to control distance and those people that have been to the school they know that I teach the clock system doesn't do any harm to go over it again. So I use four wedges I've got my lob wedge, my sand wedge, my gap wedge and my pitching wedge. I start with my lob wedge 60 degree and the way that I control the distance is I imagine that there is a big clock in front of me and my left arm is the long arm of the clock. So at the address position I'm at six o'clock. So when I go back there would be seven, eight, nine my arm would be parallel to the ground, ten. Eleven would be a full swing. When I swing through I'm going to stop at three o'clock on this side the reason for that is it helps me control club head speed through impact and if you control club head speed you control distance. So with pitching with a lob wedge my seven o'clock which is here and then that goes 30 yards plus or minus two yards 28 to 32. If I take it back to eight o'clock and I swing through that's going to go around 40 my 9 o'clock goes 50 and my 10 o'clock goes 60. Each time I finish at 3 o'clock on this side, as I said, that helps me control my club head speed through impact, controls my distance. So if I want to hit a 30 yard shot, I take it back just to 7 and through. Now, I caught that a little fat. The reason being I did not rotate through so when you're practicing and you catch it fat if you look at your hips you'll see your hips didn't turn. So if I make sure that I turn now that was a perfect shot that ball went about 30 yards. So I'm glad that I hit the fat shot because it gave me the opportunity to show you why you hit them fat is because you don't turn through the ball. If I've got a 50 yard shot I'm going to take my arm to nine o'clock so to tie in with what I was talking about on Thursday with practice swings I would do my practice swing taking it to nine through to three go here nine that ball is going to go approximately 50 yards so the accuracy part the follow through goes straight through so if I'm hitting at the camera my hands would finish here. I don't want around here. If I was throwing a ball to the camera I would go here with my hand. It's the same thing. That club face is an extension of the palm of my hand. I just let that go through, finish with my hands kind of in the middle of my chest here. So work on this. It's a great exercise to even improve your full swing because you're doing your body rotation, you're doing your extension, you're doing your release. You're doing all the things that are vital to the full swing. Work on your pitch shot, work on your clock system, figure out your distances. Once I've gone to a 10 o'clock with my lob wedge, 
I then hit a 10 o'clock with my sand wedge. That takes me a little bit further, 10 o'clock with my gap wedge, and then finally 10 o'clock with my pitching wedge. Try it, you'll improve your pitching.